Okay, good morning and welcome back to the next lecture of energy conservation and waste heat recovery. What we will do today is we will continue our discussion on energy economics. Okay. So, in the last class if you recall we were looking at the metric called EROEI energy returned on energy invested okay, which is a ratio or which gives or which denotes the surplus energy that we have which is available to us for use. And the reason why this is important is as we said part of the energy that we generate or is used up for generating that energy itself. Okay. So, EROEI is a ratio of the energy that we have to spend sorry that the energy that is available to us over the energy that we have to spend to get that energy out to, to get that available energy out. Okay. So, this is what we were talking about the net energy and we looked at this curve what we said was this curve denoted EREOI or EROEI and on the x axis and surplus energy on the y axis. Okay. And we said that the oil if we look historically in 1950s we could get one barrel we, could, we had to spend one barrel of oil to get 100 barrels of oil. Okay. So, the surplus energy that was available to us was 99 percent. Okay, if 100 barrels of oil was available to us then only one barrel out of that was spent to get that 100 barrel out. But today what happened was the oil wells have become we have to go deep we have to dig deep the oil fields are larger and we have to use much so more sophisticated and huge enormous machineries in or as or enormous test rigs to drill that oil out. And so today the ratio uh, lies between 10 and 3.5 depending on the location and so on. Okay. So, that is that is the story of oil what about some of the other things all right. So, we talk about tar sand okay. tar sand let us talk about oil shale So, tar sand is around 2.5 oil shale is around also 2 lower than this okay. 2 would be somewhere here we are all now an energy cliff for both of these all right. So, why is this because we have to spend a lot more energy to get these sources of energy out of let us say this shale oil out of the shales okay, or the rocks. Okay. What about renewables? For renewables, um, let me write down some of these numbers. Let us talk about methanol, ethanol. Okay. So, these are all in the range of 2 to 3. Okay. If we talk about wind or solar they are high. So, this is for example, this is where wind is around 30. Solar again depends it is a range, but if I have to these are again ballpark numbers if I have to point solar I would again point it around here. Okay. So, the cost of getting this energy this is how where it stands. Nuclear I think the jury is still out it is it is not easy to uh, put a put a point on this curve because especially because nuclear if you have to I mean at the end of the life the decommissioning costs of a nuclear plant is huge. And uh, so, how much will it all turn out to be if we add that cost um, as part of energy in uh, then the jury is still out. So, we do not know that. Okay. So, this is where we are. All right. So, again what I am trying to say is the point I am trying to make from here is the fact that the surplus energy is what matters is the surplus energy the amount that is available below this curve which is going to drive the growth of an economy growth of the economy of a nation. All right. By the way on this curve if you ask me where is hydrogen remember we, we studied hydrogen economy in the last uh, and before studying energy economics 
hydrogen does not even form here it is 0 why because there is no source of hydrogen ok all right. So, hydrogen definitely is 0 and uh, the rest of it as I have shown here oil we are towards the energy cliff solar and wind they are good propositions as part of renewables, but if you talk about by methanol, ethanol etcetera they are also not very attractive definitely more than one, but uh, not attractive we are still as in, in, in the energy cliff ok. All right, so that kind of uh, wraps up our discussion on the energy economics ok and how energy and economy energy drives economic growth all right. So, the socio economic growth of a nation if you look at it energy plays a vital role in that all right. So, if that is the case let us move on and talk about uh, some energy economics and some other parameters. So, remember we talked about E R O E I as one of the metrics of energy economics what we will go next is if we think about installation of an energy uh, plant what is it that we are going to talk about ok. When, are, when is it that we are going to say that the energy installation is viable let us look at that. So, I would say installation of an energy facility ok. So, what is it that I am going to talk about? So, I would say an energy project sorry is considered to be economically viable. So, here now we are talking about economics of an energy installation ok this is no longer about how energy impacts economy, but it is about economics of an energy installation ok. This is how we made the transition from through E R O E I which are talked about how surplus energy drives the nation, but which also talks about if a source of energy and an install if you look at a source of energy by uh, largely whether it is makes economic sense whether it is economically viable ok. So, from that we uh, we now come into economic viability of an energy project. So, this is going to be economically viable if the following are satisfied and what are those? The first I would say is benefits is larger than investment cost. Okay. This has to be and this is kind of we already saw that as uh, when we talked about net energy, energy out over energy in. Now, but what we talk about benefits uh, is also something it is not just about the energy which is definitely the major portion major part, but there are other other metrics also which we are going to talk about all right. Second what proposed project is more profitable compared to alternatives ok. This is true for any business proposition not just energy if because let us say I am going to start a business uh, or, or an start a business on energy and I have to go and get funding I have to convince my investor that what I am proposing will turn out to be more profitable and profitable is not just about money or it, but uh, it, it may be about benefits also which you know kind of indirectly uh, does have a monetary value attached to it. So, it is more profitable compared to alternatives has to be right we have to pick the best alternative ok. If somebody is if some, some other alternative is better we better we should invest in that and not something which is inferior ok. Number 3 project can be scaled up to attain
optimum economic results all right so for example what i'm trying to say here is if i talk about any energy installation i will first set up what we call pilot plants which are small scale plants just to show that you know this this is actually possible this is this is technologically feasible this is economically feasible uh, and we actually generate energy out of the source that we are talking about okay but finally i also have to come up with a proposition where we say that yes i am going to show you a proof of concept let's say for a 100 kilowatts plant but what i am doing can be scaled up to give me several megawatts right so for example if i set up an orc uh, based plant for waste heat recovery okay and my pilot may be a 20 kilowatt plant and that that may run wonderfully well but finally 20 kilowatts is what it is it's a very small amount of energy that is available small amount of power that is available that technology that i'm trying to show to be viable through this pilot plant should be scalable if successful i should be able to scale it up to give me at least 10 times that amount of power then it becomes attractive then i can say you can you know you you can run this small factory using just the waste heat recovery okay so that is what i mean that the project should be we should be able to be to scale up the project so that the optimum economic results are attainable all right okay so now we are going to talk about a few metrics so so let us talk about metrics for energy economics let me first list them one by one so the first one was we have already studied ero ei and i'm not going to talk about that this is already done let me write down a few more things and then we will talk about it we'll talk about payback period we are going to talk about return on investment or roi we are talking about something called net present value or npv we are going to talk about something called levelized cost of energy or lcoe and finally we are going to talk about something called input output method okay so these are some of the metrics that we are going to talk about so er oi i is something that we have already spoken about let's talk about payback period we'll take we will keep coming back to this list and take each of them one by one so payback period is the first one and let's see what that is okay so payback period let us denote it by n star what is it i would say n star is the number of years typically it is expressed in terms of years for small installations i mean in terms of energy installation it will be, it will typically be in years okay but again remember these are all generic economic terms also so sometimes payback is also given in terms of months and so on all right so number of years required to recover investment from net cash flow and cash flow means cash inflow what do i mean by this 
once my plant is up and running and let us say I'm producing electricity okay I'm going to stay, sell that electricity to the state electricity board or wherever and at a certain cost and that is how I'm generating revenue right now in order to set up this plant maybe I have spent money maybe I spent 100 crores of rupee, Indian rupees okay now every year I generate so many uh, gigawatt hour of electricity and I sell it to the electricity board and I probably make money uh, let us say 5 crores every year or maybe 10 crores every year okay but however I also have to keep that plant running in order to run that plant I have to maintain the equipment okay I have to employ people and pay their salaries I have to pay taxes on the earnings that I am getting and a lot of other things. So once I remove all these expenses which are regular in expenses that I incur annual operating for operation and maintenance and taxes what I am left with is the net cash flow right again it is like savings I get a salary I pay part of it as tax then I pay part of it to uh, you know to pay my bills uh, to pay my fees for my children uh, and for, for my food for my living and, and all these family expenses and so on and then at the end of the month what am I uh, what I'm left with if any is my savings so that my net cash flow that I have okay so that is the net cash flow over here which is the total revenue that I generate minus the operating expenses uh, and that net cash flow will be some amount let us say um, out of 10 crores what I am left with is about 7 crores and I have invested 100 crores to set up the plant. So therefore it is going to take me 7, 7, 7, 7 I keep on doing that and finally it is going to take me a little more than 14 years to recover the 100 crores that I had invested to set up the plant. Okay. So that is like what we call the payback period. Okay. So therefore, I can write this way that sigma t equals to 0 to n star and I would say cf okay, and this I will write it as cf of t minus initial investment must be greater than equal to 0. Okay where i is initial investment cost clear so this is one way of defining payback period n star right so now uh, if you think about it if i am an investor if i put money in a business and I am getting share, um, I would like to have a rapid payback period. I would like n star to be as small as possible. Okay. So, a rapid payback period is one of the prime criteria for judging an investment. Okay. So, let me write down rapid payback period is a prime criterion. for judging an investment. So, the example that we gave that 100 crores and 10 crores of uh, total cash inflow every year minus expenses etcetera and the net cash flow net uh, payback oh sorry, the payback period we calculated was 15 years a little more than 14 years. Uh, 15 years may not be very attractive to an investor he said well I have to wait for 15 years from today to get back that money uh, no, not very attractive however if you say it's five years then you will say oh, that's a good amount that's a good way I put in money and get get it back in five years and after five years whatever I get is is my profit okay I've already recovered my cost in five years okay so it is important and you know uh, an impatient investor would like to have a very rapid 
payback period. Okay. Now, what are the drawbacks of payback period? One of the drawbacks of payback period, the way we have calculated is, it does not consider time value of money. Okay. And also, I would say effect impact after n star is not considered. So, payback period only deals with cash flow till the payback period. After that, what happens? Um, it does not it is not considered it is the payback period is defined that way but more importantly it does not consider the time value of money so again the 10 crore that i get in the first year versus 10 crore that i get after 10 years is not of the same value okay 10 crores after 10 years is worth much less today okay so therefore that time value of money that the money money devalues over time that is not considered in this definition of payback period it just sums up the total net cash flows over the years and the moment it equals or exceeds the first time it equals or exceeds the initial investment cost we said okay that is the payback period okay so that is a drawback but nevertheless it is a very quick way uh, of it's of it's it's a very quick criterion and probably a very important criterion when we judge an energy investment or any business proposition for that matter okay so therefore that brings me to the next thing next metric what did we talk about so payback period now we have discussed return on investment clear so this is what we are going to talk about now so, return on investment or ROI, okay. Okay, for a banking guy, ROI may also mean rate of interest, okay. Uh, but here, ROI is return on investment. We are not really talking about banking here, we are talking about energy projects, okay, where we are putting in money. So, it, that is the investment. And what I get out of that, of the production of that energy plant or energy installation is the return. Okay. So, ROI is again the net annual return as a percent or fraction of initial investment okay so again i would define it first as r o i i would write it as s minus uh, a o over i okay and I will tell you what all these means. Okay. So, what is S? S is annual savings. If you are talking about energy, it is annual savings in terms of let us say fuel. Okay. I was producing some energy and consuming some amount of fuel, and by this new method I am consuming producing the same amount of energy consuming much lesser fuel. Okay, so, that is my annual savings. Okay. What is AO? I would say that is the annual operating cost and this will include operation and maintenance okay, O and M. It may include taxes that you pay and so on. Okay. 
and what is i this we have already said is initial investment cost clear so this is roi right so now if i look at this and try to relate the payback period so what happens when s minus ao over a period n over a period n becomes equal to i or just greater than i that n is or n star that n star is my payback period so payback period and roi are actually related clear it's just another way of looking at it right so let us take an example again from real life okay, and trying to show what is roi and what is payback period okay completely different from energy let us say we stay in an apartment complex and which is guarded by a certain number of security personnel all right and i say that i am going to for added security and safety i will install cctv cameras everywhere okay or let us even think about roads the roads in the city today where we are installing cctv cameras okay and the cctv cameras does help in tracking traffic violations in tracking accidents and so on right but the to install the cctv cameras everywhere i would have certain amount of um, investment that i have to uh, a certain amount of money that i have to put so that's my initial cost but then i say that you know if you put these see, these cameras then in my apartment complex for example i can reduce the number of security guards by 2 right or in case of a city i can probably reduce the number of traffic policemen who are you know stationed at different corners and trying to catch people give them these fines etc i can reduce those number i can put them to good use elsewhere and have the cct ca cameras record those violations take pictures of the number plates and then we send summons to those people based on the records that we recover from the number plates okay so of course there is an initial investment cost in terms of installing these cameras in terms of wiring in terms of the recording device in terms of someone to operate that but the savings is in terms of lesser number of personnel that i have to deploy okay so then you can say that for example the apartment apartment complex it cost me 20 lakhs to put cctv cameras everywhere but that would let me allow me to reduce three security guards okay and the combined salary of both and of of the three of them annually is let us say 4 lakhs okay so then i can say that you know my return on investment right away is 4 lakhs and my payback period therefore is 5 years because i have spent as my initial investment i had spent 20 lakhs so therefore my return on investment is 5 years again keep uh, keep in mind that i am just talking about the salary that i am saving but of course there is some additional cost in maintenance of these cameras in servicing of these cameras and so on mm, so which i am saying that i am saving 4 lakhs every year after deducting those from the uh, i mean that is my net savings okay of 4 lakhs so the secure salary of the security guards minus the operating cost is 4 lakhs okay. so that's an example from real life for energy installation also is the same for example uh, in a in a in a in a village where there is no electricity today so we are using diesel generator sets so diesel gen sets the cost of producing that electricity is very high almost three times uh, the amount that we pay from the uh, that that we pay for our electric electricity bills okay that we get from the grid so therefore now if i bring electricity to that village what is happening of course to bring that electricity there will be a huge capital expenditure involved initial investment is high and somebody has to pay for it but then i am not going to use diesel anymore but instead i am going to generate that electricity in a captive power plant which is going to light up that village and therefore that diesel cost is gone 
I'm going to produce electricity at probably half or one third the cost. And so over a period of time, I'm going to recover that initial investment. And after that, whatever, I, uh, whatever is the cost differential will be my savings, right? Okay, so with that, we will come to the end of this lecture. So today, what we did was, we wrapped up our discussion on energy recovery on energy invested, EROEI. And then we talked about two, two other metrics. One is the payback period, and the second one is return on investment. Okay. In the next class, we will start our discussion on a third metric, which is called, or rather a fourth metric, which is called a net present value. Thank you very much.